Basman say, Basman, Basman, Basman Hey everybody, Austin Moss here with Sweetwater Sound, here to take a look at the Assimilator from Rossum Electro. It's a super beefy sampler, one of the most capable on the market. It is 28 HP and has eight channels. Each channel has eight zones with sample playback for each zone. It's a DC coupled unit throughout, which means as a sampler, not only is it gonna sample audio, like records, like we were just hearing that RZ audio sample plan, it'll also sample control voltage, like gates and triggers, envelopes, something from the Control Forge, for example. You can do an awful lot with it. So you can create CV waveforms and play them back to control all kinds of other devices. It's an awful lot of fun. There's tons of ways to manipulate the samples as you would expect with any kind of sampler pitch, level. One thing that's super unique to the assimilator is phase modulation. Uh, according to Dave Rossum in the manual, that's the first sampler that really lets you modulate one sample with another in this type of format. Of course, you can do all kinds of things like start and endpoint modulation. We were playing with some of that here as well, and we'll take a little bit deeper look at what it's capable of. In fact, the way that we're going to look at this module is we're going to look at the topography of it, kind of the layout and wh what we're looking at, and then we're going to do a little bit deeper dive into some of these individual sections. The assimilator has 422 megabytes of internal RAM, and you can fill that RAM up from an SD card here. You can put hundreds of gigabytes on an SD card these days and store all of your projects and presets and samples right in there. This thing has loads of muscle, tons of capability, and we're going to look at some of what it can do right now. So let's take a look at some of what is happening in this particular patch to showcase some of what this module can do and give you some ideas of what you might want to do with it in your rack. Here in channel one, we've got a multi-zone channel and we've got a bunch of different animal sounds laid out. We're selecting what zone is being played from the CV that's coming in. Uh, in this particular case, you can see that we're doing that with the CV coming in on 7A. We could also assign that to pitch or any number of other presets parameters, but we're going to assign it to zone select in this particular case. Really quiet bear snore. Right? We go back to our channel select. Here we've got a clock at 120 on quarter notes. Okay, and what we're going to do with that is send that out, our dedicated output, and we're going to fire off another sequencer with that clock. Cool? And we can set it to loop and one shot, so it's just going to keep looping indefinitely. Turn that off. I'm going to skip channel three and come back to it in just a second. We're going to jump to channel four, which is actually one of the presets that comes on the memory card from the factory. Really lovely CS80 chord stack, right? Now I can fire this from another controller with CV and gate externally, but I'm gonna come back to three like I promised. What we've got is a saw LFO, also at 120, so it's gonna loop and we're gonna hear the LFO modulating our Morpheus filter, okay? Right? Next we've got our violin samples here, these are grouped together in a link mode, so it's going to be a stack, not left and right necessarily. We've got some fun phase modulation stuff that we're controlling there. Finally, we've got a good old-fashioned sample off of a record from the Kingston All-Stars featuring Mr. RZ Jackson here. We're triggering it with external CV and gate, and we're controlling the start point modulation with another controller externally. Lots of fun. Now let's take a look at how we got here. 
Let's start by familiarizing ourselves with the layout of the module here. At the bottom, we've got our sample inputs. It's a sampler. This is where we plug up our audio or our control voltage signals that we're going to record. We've also got our gate trigger inputs here along the left-hand side, and then we've got 24 different CV inputs for controlling different parameters on our channels. We've got our mix outputs, which are currently connected to a Rossum Electro Morpheus filter. And then we've got our individual channel outputs. This allows you to send each channel to its own output for additional processing, or if you're using control voltage or gate and trigger outputs, you can send those to other sequencers or other filters or whatever you want to do with those. We've got a couple of data knobs here. Data knob one is primarily for selecting what parameter you're going to modify. It's also a push button encoder, so you can push down on it to select what you're wanting to do, for example. Data knob two is primarily setting the value of the parameter that we've selected. We've got our load and save functions that you would expect. Our utility settings here take us to some housekeeping functions. Our channel and select button takes us to the channel page. The channel page is kind of the home page in my mind. It's where you go to set all of the different parameters for each individual channel. Our channel select buttons let us select a channel for editing or they let us fire off samples as well. If we just want to select a channel without hearing it, like in a live context, you can hold this select button here and it lets us select the channel without firing it off. We've got our sampling setup. This is where we go to set up our inputs and our outputs, uh, how we're triggering the sample initiation and stop processes. Our zone select is where we look at our different zone settings. We can have up to eight zones per channel. In this particular channel, I've got five zones selected. You can set the range of them individually per voltage or, if you like, you can set them all equally and the assimilator will do that for you automatically. It's really handy. Our sampling setup function takes us to where we set our inputs and our outputs, what we're sampling, how we're sampling, high pass filters, input levels, all that kind of thing that you would expect. And the sample button lets us begin the sampling process manually. Let's take a look at our channel parameter buttons here. Of course, we've got pitch, which adjusts the individual pitch per sample. And these are also offset per zone. So we can have each individual zone with its own pitch offset. Pitch lets us set the individual pitch per sample as well as any offsets per zone. In addition to the individual pitch, we can also choose linear FM amounts and exponential FM amounts, which comes in really handy when we start getting into some of the phase modulation and, and other frequency modulation features later on. Level takes us to individual channel levels. Now this is important to consider against the mix level. We'll talk about the mix level here in just a second, but this lets us set a level for each individual sample for its own individual output as well. On top of that, it lets us set our amplitude modulation amount, both linear and exponential. The phase modulation button takes us to one of the unique features of this sampler. We can set the phase modulation source as another channel. Here we'll take a look at, at uh, channels five and six. We can set our modulation to another channel or we can set it to a left and right input so we can have a live performance sound modulating our samples, or we can have any one of our 24 inputs as our phase modulation source. If we do that, we can come down here and select whether it's the relative CV input for the channel, or if it's an absolute setting where we choose precisely what CV input we're looking at for our phase modulation source. And then finally, we set our phase modulation index, which is essentially the amount of phase modulation that we have going on this channel and how we're modulating that amount. The next button is mutate. This is where we get into some of the digital components of the sound, like the bit depth. We can modify it to be a lower bit depth if we like. We can modulate that as you would expect. 
Dave did a bunch of really cool things in the simulator to clean up some of the aliasing artifacts that you might get in another sampler. And if you want some of those aliasing artifacts, you can modify that here in the aliasing function in the mutate menu. So if you want a little more of that crunchy grit that you get from a pitch shifted aliased sample, you can just turn that on right here. And of course you can modulate that amount as well. Past the aliasing, we've got a reverse function. So you can play the sample backwards. Okay. All right, just like you would expect. And then the last function here in the mutate menu is the smooth feature. If you've got a dodgy edit on a loop or if you've got a, a rough edit on a start or something like that, the smoothing feature just smooths it out exactly like it says. And you're gonna have a lot of those. Frankly, part of the performance element of this sampler is twisting up loops on the fly and you aren't always gonna just get in at the zero crossing and this really helps make it sound more natural and more pleasant. Next menu is our pan and mix function. The pan is exactly what you would expect. It's the left and right balance on the mix output for each individual channel. And then we've got our mix output level. Now again, this is relative to our channel level. So if you've got your individual channel turned way down, you may have to turn your mix output right up so that you can hear it in the output but not in the channel, right? Or you may find that you will more commonly want to turn your mix output right down and you only hear your sample on the channel output. Next menu is our sample start. So the sample start menu is where I spend an awful lot of time. There's a lot of fun things that you can do here. Of course, at its basic level, it's where the sample starts. But you can modulate that with one of your control voltages. And here, I'm using the control <laughs> voltage to change our start point. Right? And that's fun because it lets you get some granular kind of wavetable sounds without even trying really hard. You don't have to spend a bunch of time. You can just modulate the start point of uh, a long sample and really get some unique textures out of it. And then sample end is essentially the same window, but you're modifying where the sample might end. As we move on to the right, we've got our loop start, which is the same concept. It's where our loop points start and end. And of course, those are modulatable from any one of our CV inputs as well. Next, we've got our play modes. One shot means the sample plays all the way to the end, regardless of the gate input. And gated means that the sample is gonna play as long as the gate is high. That's one shot, and gated, right? Next, we've got our envelope. Each individual channel has an envelope with attack and release, and you can set those all here, and you can modulate them with your CV inputs, as you would expect. Next, we've got our loop mode, and there's essentially three ways to use that feature. You can use it off, where there's no loop at all. You can use it on where it's going to loop until it releases and then it's going to play out as a function of the envelope. Or we've got gated, which means that the sample is going to loop until the gate goes low and then it's going to play out the end of the sample. And that last mode, the gated mode, is really handy for acoustic instruments if you're trying to make your own key mapped acoustic samples. Finally, we've got the memory card here right on the front. This is where you're gonna store all of your sounds and samples and you can save samples at 48K right up through 192. You Probably won't use 192 very much unless you intend to do some extreme pitch shifting and don't want artifacts. When I was sampling CV and gate inputs, that was where I would use the high res ones so that I could do extreme tempo shifts and that sort of thing. Now that we've taken a look at the overall module, let's jump into some of the deeper functions here and let's start with the sampling setup. Right here at the top, this is where we choose where the sample is going to live after we've created it. So if 
I want this sample to live in channel three after I've made it. That's where I assign that here. We've got different record modes. Once means it plays one time through. Circular means at the end of the sample length, it starts recording over itself. Sampling time, I like to just leave it at all so I could record 422 megabytes worth of audio at once. That's uh, well over an hour if you use 48K in mono. But you can set to a specific length if you like. You've got your sampling rate, 48, 96, and 192. You've got your naming approach, how it names samples if you're making a whole bunch of them at a time. This is our high pass filter labeled AC coupled and DC coupled. If you're doing CV, gates, triggers, things like that, you're going to want the DC coupled option. If you're sampling a record like that RZ Jackson vocal sample, you'd set the AC coupled input so that you don't get any of the DC pass through. And then we've got our arming safety. I always use it in safe mode, but if you are doing something live and you want to be able to fire off that sample record option, you set it to hot and that sample button begins to flash so you can begin sampling right away. This is something that's really cool about this sampler is the threshold setting. Lots of samplers allow you to set the threshold when the audio coming in your inputs crosses the threshold, it automatically begins sampling and then to stop it you hit the sample button. But here we can use one of our CV inputs, any one of them, to begin sampling. This is great if you've got a a, a gate loop from a sequencer or you've got some kind of loop with a trigger associated like a control forge or even a maths module, you can use that gate to begin the sampling sequence. Next we've got our input source. We can choose left, right, or stereo, or dual mono. Super handy. And then finally we've got our level amount, so if we need to attenuate our signal we can do that as well. Let's take a little closer look at the channel mode. So this is our page where we really build our presets out. The first section here shows us what sample we've got, and it always shows zone one, right? So if we've got multiple zones per channel, it's only going to show zone one. It's a good thing to keep in mind. Next, we've got the mode for the channel. You may find that you have eight different channels all in master mode, and that's totally fine. But it does let you do some linking between the channels and let them behave as a group. Here for example, channels 5 and 6. Channel 5 is our master and channel 6 is set to stereo right. What that means is channel 5 is going to be our master and it's going to trigger channel 6 as well. And channel 6 is using all of the channel presets and parameters from channel 5. Don't worry, channel 6 still has all of its parameters saved, it's just ignoring them when it's in this mode. We can also change it to link mode, and this is handy if you're trying to make a big stack of sounds. Here, for example, we've got this chord sound, and we're going to link this violin sound to that one. So now it's going to play all of these at once, and finally, we've got a cycle mode. This is really handy for drums especially, kind of a round robin thing. So what it'll do is we'll start with master, five, and then it'll cycle through each one of these until it gets to the next master and it'll jump back to four here, right? So four is our master, five is cycle, six is cycle. So let me show you cycle mode from an external gate. Triggers four, then five, then six, and then back to four then five, and then six, right? Kind of fun. One other really handy feature on the channel page is the data to CV assign. So what we can do here is use our data knob as a continuous controller like a mod wheel or something, right? And here at the moment I've got it set up to control CVA input. As you can see this thing is loads of fun. It's got tons of capabilities and we've really only scratched the surface. Hopefully we've got enough creative juices going that you have some ideas of how you'd use it in your case and use it to control other modules in your system or just use it as a sample player with some other control device, a keyboard, a sequencer, or something like that. If you have any questions about this module or if you'd like to get one in your own rig, give your Sweetwater sales engineer a call.